Welcome to a third volume of symbols used by Christians. There are two other episodes full of symbols on this channel to watch if you haven't seen them yet, but if you have, we're going to go straight in to volume three. The first symbol we're going to look at is a Christogram most famous in the Western Christian world. It is composed of three letters that look like an IHS or an IHC. A Christogram is a shortening of the name of Jesus Christ, similar to the Kiro or the ICXC symbols that we looked at in Volume 1. These are the Latinized versions of the first three Greek letters in the name Christ. This particular one can be found in 8th century Byzantine coins, but it first gained real prominence in the Western world in the 15th century. A Catholic Saint Bernardine in Northern Italy was fighting a strange and surprising rise of paganism there. He wanted Christians to mark their doors with the beautiful name of Jesus. And this is that symbol. Bernardine's version of this design is the one most commonly recognized in various Western churches and buildings, as well as Bible covers. It is sometimes mistakenly said to represent the Latin words for the phrase in this sign or in this sign you will conquer, a reference to the cross. This is not true. It is in fact a Christogram. It is a shortening of the name of Christ. Another group of letters you will often see in churches, normally atop a cross, resemble the English letters I-N-R-I, sometimes I-N-B-I. This is mentioned in scripture as being written in three different languages atop the cross of Christ. I-N-R-I is from the Latin words and I-N-B-I are from the Greek words. So you will see that one in Orthodox churches and the first one in Western churches. Letters, as we've seen just now and in previous episodes, form a very useful way of making Christian symbols. And they form another early Christian symbol from the age of persecution. This is the wheel. Now this wheel is actually a fish. Yes, you heard that right. In the first volume of symbols, we talked about the fish symbol and how it is a shortening of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. The first letters of those words in Greek spell out the Greek word for fish. But if you take those exact same Greek letters for fish and draw them on top of each other, you end up with a wheel. And this wheel can be found in several places in the Roman catacombs. The fish is not the only animal seen as a symbol of Christianity and found in early church art and seen around the world as Christian symbols today. Another one, probably one of the most commonly recognized ones, is the dove, a symbol of peace, both because of its presence in the story of Noah and its presence at the Jordan River during Christ's baptism. The dove has been portrayed since ancient times as holding an olive branch. The olive branch is another symbol of Christianity. This is because of its presence in the story of Noah's Ark, its many mentions in the New Testament, and its linguistic implications for mercy. For more on that, watch our episode on Lord Have Mercy. There are actually many birds that are seen as symbols of various elements of the Christian faith. Another major one from the early church is the peacock. The peacock was seen as a symbol of resurrection because it has such beautiful feathers that at a point in the year will die and turn brown and fall away and then it will grow new feathers, more beautiful than ever before and thus each year the peacock shows an example of resurrection into new life. Peacocks can be seen in Christian designs as far back as the catacombs. It is a very royal creature. A mythic bird that is also a symbol of Christianity is the phoenix. Now the phoenix was a Greek mythological creature that is born from its own ashes. At the end of its life, the phoenix will explode into a burst of fire and from the ashes, it will rise again. Once again, it is a symbol of the resurrection. And because the reproduction of the phoenix is not like other animals, that it rises from fire, similar to the burning bush in the days of Moses, it is often also seen as a symbol of Christ's virgin birth. In early Christian art, the phoenix is often portrayed sitting in a palm tree. Now, the palm tree and palm leaves are once again another living symbol of the Christian faith. Apart from the obvious connection with the palm leaves being laid on the ground for Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, there is a reference in the book of Revelation of people in heaven dressed in white holding palm branches. So, the palm tree is in itself a symbol of eternity, of heaven, and of paradise, which is why, like the dove, the phoenix, and the peacock, it can be seen in many ancient Christian tombs and catacombs. So going through a few others that the ancient Christians would have encountered regularly and that you and I might encounter at any point are things like the donkey. The donkey is a symbol of humility, a symbol of peace because of Jesus' use of the donkey and the many biblical references to it. 
The bee is another symbol of Christians because it works so hard to produce something beautiful. Ambrose of Milan actually said that the church is one big beehive and all of the Christians are little bees. Honey itself is seen as a symbol of Christ because it is imperishable and it is delicious. It is a beautiful thing, just like the message of Christ. An absolutely classic symbol is, of course, the apple. Now, in Genesis, there is no mention of what kind of fruit is the fruit that Eve should not have taken, but it is often portrayed as an apple. The reason is, is because the Latin word for apple and the Latin word for evil is exactly the same. But in the Bible, the apple is also mentioned as being a beautiful thing. And of course, as a creation of God, it has to be. So when the apple is portrayed in art as being held by Adam or Eve, it is a representation of sin and the fall of mankind. If it is being held by either Christ or his mother, it represents salvation being brought to us by the new Adam. And so ends another volume of Christian symbols. Many of these can be found and will be found by you at some point in the very near future. Symbols are a lot of fun because the more Christian symbols you know, the more chance you have of running into one in your daily life. And the more chance you have of running into one, the more chances you have to remember Christ. So keep your eyes open. Thanks for watching. Let us know if you want volume four. Today's tea is one of my favorites that I was given over Christmas. And it is a blend of several different black teas along with some red fruits and caramel and bergamot. Bergamot is in a number of delicious teas I have. It's an excellent herb. And I also find it quite funny because it sounds like bigimot, which is the Russian word for hippopotamus.